on this episode of Rex to Riches. What the hell are you getting us into, Rob? Wow. <laughs> I think there's a hole in for it. <laughs> Barry White's pushing the limits. You want me to make it a list or you got it in your head? I'll make a list. A car he didn't buy. I've had a lot of these cars over the years. A make his team mocks. Mostly old paint and rust. And an auction he knows nothing about. You want to put it on eBay? Yeah. No, I just don't know anything about it. It'll be one thing to get this 69 Roadrunner made. Why is it every Mopar we get has the floors like that? And quite another to get it sold online. I don't know what coding is. Is Barry heading for his own dot-com crash? 8600! How to make a buck. The Barry White way. Just rip that out of there. Find a wreck. That's exactly what we're looking for. Sleep underneath there? Get the right people. Jen, do something. What do you want me to do? I don't want to hear that. Go draw something. The right parts. Easy, 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 easy. And go to work. Bring it on. Then hope. It's flawless. Someone wants to buy it. Let your money bring you happiness. That's how you get from Rex to Riches. Yeah! You know, 40 treasures hidden here in Southern California. No one knows they're here. No. And you said there's more down this way, too, right? Probably 10 or 15 more down here in another bar. This is one of California's best kept secrets, a muscle car wreck farm. Barry wants us to get like a 68 or 69 Roadrunner because that's what he had when he first started drag racing. For Barry White's team, this time it's Mopar or no car. That's a cool car, but it's not a Mopar. That's what we're looking for. Barry has his sights set on family nostalgia. My brother and I ran a 69 Roadrunner. You know, that was a good car. That was a, that was a, a cool body style. It was uh, car of the year in 1969, I think. I'm sure there's one in here someplace we can put on. Back then, his 69 Plymouth Roadrunner was for love. This time, it's for money, and he wants to make a splash. We can uh, take it to SEMA, maybe do a burnout across a parking lot or something. Yeah. Who knows? See what they let us get away with. In just four weeks, Barry plans to reveal his latest creation here at SEMA the world's largest auto trade show. Ford, Chrysler, Chevrolet, everybody who's anybody in the industry is either there or has vehicles there or something. 100,000 visitors from 100 countries. And we just gotta get some good qualified people out there that wanna, wanna hand me Roadrunner. Two million square feet of auto goodness. And Barry wants to stake his claim with some show-stopping super muscle. He can't sell the Roadrunner here, but he can hook potential buyers. Back in 1969, Chrysler Plymouth came in three flavors. The basic satellite, the rare GTX, and the youth-centered Roadrunner. They all share the same platform and with some speed shop magic. Doesn't matter if it's a satellite or a Roadrunner or a GTX, we can make yeah. it into what we want. One thing is not negotiable, the engine. It has to be a Hemi, as any Mopar fan will tell you. For some reason, Mopar guys just tend to, you know, they're just like hardcore into Mopar. That stuff's all crap, you know, it's gotta be a Mopar or nothing else. Wow, I'm this place of, is pretty wild. <laughs> I'm kind of in disbelief here. This is the place to go for mid-60s Mopars, I guess. Huh? Only thing worse than a teed-off Mopar fan is a teed-off Barry so White. I, I know where Designer yeah. Chris Brown and body guy Tony Correa need a Plymouth yeah. fast. Oh, yeah. got all the trim. She's a beauty. Yeah, got a little rust in her. Like I said, this is probably a hot car back in the uh, day. Oh, I bet. <laughs> now, here's a great parts car. Yeah. Look at all the trim on this. Wow, what a paint job. Mopar is short for Chrysler Motor Parts. This is something everybody's grandma had. And Chris and Tony have found a Mopar ranch. Unfortunately, the four doors just aren't, they don't bring any kind of money. The new creation's heading to SEMA. All Barry's peers and competitors will be there. They better get this right. This looks a little bit more like what we're looking for, 69 Roadrunner. 
You know, this is one, if you took the paint off. You think? This is definitely an ugly one. Looks, got, looks like it got hit with a bag of nickels everywhere. Tony knows a bucket of trouble when he sees it. You do what you want. I just don't want to waste my breath here. But Chris... What kind of money are you looking to get out of this thing? Probably about five grand. Yeah. What do you think, Tony? I think we should keep looking. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Who's breaking the news to Barry? We went out to that place and looked at all those cars at the Mopar Ranch. And this was the only thing that was kind of like what we we're looking for. And it's got a little body work. What do you mean by a little body work? It's, it's not as good as it looks in the pictures. So the car's no good? It's no me. good. It's no good for us. Just as well. Chris has his bases covered. So what else we got? Uh, well, we got that one up north. This one. Oh, that looks lovely. It's supposed to be a solid car, though. Who found it? Ron. Well, Ron says it's a solid car? Ron says it's a solid car. It's hard to earn Barry's respect, but this guy has Ron Jenkins, Mopar Jedi. The first Mopar I had, uh, my grandfather actually bought for me. Uh, I wasn't even of driving age yet, you know, and I had a 72 Charger with a 440 in it. The, the bug bit, I, boy, I was into it. Hook, line, and sinker. Loved Mopars. Loved them. Couldn't get enough of them. I've owned 70-something Mopars since then, and uh, it's just been a blast. Ron knows what the hell he's looking at. If Ron says it's a good car, it's probably a good car. Yeah. Not probably, it is a good car. Must be Barry's day for good advice. Ron's suggesting a car, and daughter Jen has a plan, too. Hey, Dad. Yeah? I was just on eBay, and there's, like, a bunch of roadrunners on there that just are going for a lot of money. And I was thinking, if they can get that kind of money for that roadrunner, why can't we get a lot of money for our roadrunner on eBay? You want to put it on eBay? Yeah. yeah. Barry was planning a traditional auction. He's an old-fashioned kind of guy. He likes to see bidders kick the tires. He likes to see the whites of their eyes. 25, not 25. And the color of their money. 72. It's a little foreign to me. Um, it's a little different. I like to, you know, shake the hand of the person and, and look at them in the eye and tell them what the car is and what it's about. The only downside is to it, you know, when we're here, when we have an auction, you know, we're there and it's all excitement and hype and how are we going to kind of get that going? I mean, does they, do people get excited before the absolute end of the bill? Yeah, we can make it like a 10-day auction. And Jen wants the online auction to start while they're still bid. building the car. I don't have a problem with doing that. I just don't know anything about it. You're going to have to handle it because I don't know anything about that. You know that. Yeah. You don't want it. While Jen tows her dad down the information superhighway, the Mopar master arrives. What the hell are you getting us into, Ron? <laughs> Look what I found. Absolute <laughs> faith. That's what's needed here. Pitchers didn't do this justice. You did a nice job here. Yeah. Floor ah. doesn't look that bad. That looks pretty clean. You know, whatever we're missing, I can look around. I've had a lot of these cars over the years, so I bet you I can do good as far as getting subcomponents for it here. The man just keeps giving. Oop, trunk floor. Well, trying to hide trunk. something from us. Trunk floor is gone. <laughs> wow. I think there's a hole in this works. That's all this for just 1500 bucks. You know, it's all very repairable. You know, once we get the car, you know, stripped down the bare metal, you know, we can do all the welding and then get it all that's primed up. And I think, but all in all, this car is not that bad. Like I said, we got to put a trunk in it, you know. Take the windshield wiper, all the stuff in the inch compartment. We'll leave the steering and the suspension in. We're taking it apart. Everything's going to be new. Everything will be new, all right. Not just the Roadrunner, but Barry's whole plan. I was going to use that plug. He needs the car at SEMA in a little over three weeks, but bids open on eBay in just two. What's wrong with this picture? Barry White wants to debut his 69 Plymouth Roadrunner at SEMA the world's largest auto trade show. Maybe do a burnout across a parking lot or something. Yeah. Who knows? See what they let us get away with. 
There's no buyers at SEMA, just Barry's peers and his competitors. Barry wants to make a splash, but he also wants the cash. You want to put it on eBay? Yeah. And for that, he's counting on daughter Jen and their own dot-com boom. Oh. The 10-day online auction starts in two weeks and will end at the Roadrunner's SEMA debut. Why, why do we always have to be laughing when we come look at one of these cars? Trunk floor. Back from sandblasting, the Roadrunner shows its true colors. Lower quarter panels behind the tire. This isn't bad. It's got some holes in it, but it's not bad. It's not the Roadrunner bones are good. Chris can't wait to put the flesh back on. Barry usually leaves geek stuff to the young ones, but he's going to have to pay attention if he wants his money back. You've got to come up with a good rendering of the car that really shows what this thing's going to look like, because they're really not going to see the completed car until right at the end of the auction. Styling-wise, there's some really unique features on there that you don't really see until you get up close to the car. So there's really kind of some cool shapes on this car, but the overall look of the car, um, if you give it the right stance, it's just a mean, nasty car. That's what we want. But transforming Road Kill to Road Runner is gonna take time. Paint and body guy Tony is worried. I know we're getting a little over the schedule here. I'd love to paint this car right now. It doesn't look like that. I need a hood to line the front fenders. I need a, a lower gravel shield on the front to line the front fenders. Uh, you know, so we need a lot of stuff to make this work right now. And it's not happening. Things are shaping up better in Chris's world. Hey, Barry, I got a message from Mopar Performance. We got a Hemi. Excellent. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So um, they're going to coordinate with me to find out what time they got to have it here. Like, you know, yesterday, of course. But Yeah. Scoring a 472 Hemi will draw in online bidders. Just the name sells. So what are we doing here? Um, we're making a page for eBay, and I need to know how much horsepower the Hemi makes. And Jen plans um, to splash it on the auction page. 540. Okay. And 590 foot-pounds of torque. Okay. It's sweet roll reversal in the White family. Uh, this isn't about in the shop, Barry drives. On the information superhighway, he's a passenger. I'm teaching him instead of him teaching me. If I go out in the shop, he's teaching me about cars. If he comes in here, I'm teaching him. So they are actually going to put this on? Yeah, this is, I this I haven't fixed everything on it yet, but this right here is the About Me page on eBay. OK. This Jen has a week to get the site humming. Tony has just a day to get the car painted. Was it where they were able to paint the bed or they paint that tomorrow? That's going to be tomorrow. Okay. He's brought in two hired guns for an overnight job. Oh, you got the kid in there, too. Well, he's doing base coat. We're trying to break him in. We've had him doing a few little things. Excellent. And so, anyways, I'm trying to speed this up so Flo can go home at a decent hour. You're trying to make it so you don't have to go paint. That's right. <laughs> By the time they're done, Barry's spendometer will hit 12,000 burning up 180 work hours. 24 hours later, and this Roadrunner has seriously got the blues. It's time to rebuild this baby. It's a Mopar party, and everyone's invited. All right, got the front panel. Gas tank straps, headlamp bezel. It's that one. It's on your side. You read it. Very speed shop. No, stop it. It's right there. Where is it at? Grill. Grill? 69 Roadrunner Grill. Excellent. Mopar Jedi Ron Jenkins is the guest act. He's installing his custom front end suspension unit, 100 pounds lighter than the original, yet strong enough to hold the Hemi. What we've got is, is a suspension that will allow us to handle a lot of the big displacement motors that we've got today uh, and the header requirements of those cars and the oil pan requirements and that sort of thing. So our suspensions give them a whole bunch of clearance. Jen has Chris on camera duty. They'll post shots online as the car comes to life. A progress report so bidders can see what's under the hood. The brakes should be here today. Ron, the force Jenkins, isn't this party's only guest. That'll be done. 
motor should be here anytime. Okay. Hey, I'm Scott doing? from O'Reilly. How are you? Minnesota. How are I'm you? Aaron. Tim from Kansas City. Tony? This is Ron. Scott. Scott. Nice to meet you, Ron. Barry got more than he ordered from O'Reilly Parts. Two guys itching to leave the counter for a week in the speed shop. You guys into Mopars? Uh, yeah. Enthusiasm counts, but Ron's asking the tough questions. That'd be good. The Mopar minister wants to know if they're true believers. You know what Mopar stands for, right? Motor Parts American Division. Parts. Division. Okay, pass test number one. You brought your number two pen. <laughs> it's been a running gag since the Roadrunner <laughs> arrived, and there ain't too many converts in the speed shop. Mostly old paint and rust. Moments of performance are rare. Most often passed at races. My only problems are repairs. Massively overpowered and respected. That's for Ronnie. Mopar religion doesn't matter so much to Barry, just hard work. You need a lot of cleaning up, okay. some sandblasting needs to be done, there's some assembly needs to be done, so um, we got some stainless parts that need to be bolted on, so okay. bumpers. So hopefully by the time you guys get out of here, we're getting fairly close to a running car. How's that going? So not too bad, looking pretty good for the most part. There's a little bit Scott of and Tim are in for a week of hard labor. Call it a cultural exchange. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to get too much deeper into that. It takes a lot of time to detail these things, doesn't it? It sure does. I think that one of the other things that it really give us some insight on is trying to anticipate what else the customer's going to need in this project so that they don't have to wait on those parts. They'll have to remember, the customer is always right. So I do appreciate uh, running a store for O'Reilly's um, as a store manager and just emphasizing with my customers nowadays on uh, what it entails to get these cars back on the road. I don't want to talk about it. No, I'm, I'm not, it's not good for Todd. Cause... At the back end, the Mopar party gets ugly. Tony's noticed tiny paint blemishes. He's paid the price for the overnight rush job. <laughs> I can live with the quarters. They're not blotchy at all. Well, it, it is, Barry. It's see. Well, it's, you know. it's not as bad as no. that deck one. Basically, what we have is uh, a case of uh, the guys that uh, the paint of the car were unfamiliar with, you know, our stuff. And it looks like the deck lid got uh, a little blotchy, which means there's dark light spots in it. Um, Tony just gets real emotional. And, you know, he, well, he should because it's, um, you know, it's what we do. And it's important to all of us. Yeah, you can go to look at a brand new car at the dealer. Yeah, especially and, and they, silver. And a lot of them look like this. Especially silver. We yeah. just won't tolerate that. Yeah. It's too late to go back into paint. Tony needs another fix. This car's on show in Vegas in two weeks. 14 days to showtime at the world's biggest auto trade show, SEMA Las Vegas. SEMA is the perfect place to unveil any car. Barry White's 69 Plymouth Roadrunner has a date with destiny. Yeah, it's a, I think it's a good idea. I think it'll work. But before that, some online dating with pictures for potential bidders. To see it online, it's really cool. To see, you know, the thing come from just nothing to something that's painted and blue and, you know, to a complete car. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. The Roadrunner is selling on eBay, and buyers will follow the build online alongside the bids. The website goes live in just three days, closing 10 days later at the SEMA debut. The Roadrunner's big selling point is this puppy, a 472 Mopar Hemi. It's in Frankenstein's lab, becoming a monster. I think this motor calls for about an 800 or 850 CFM carb. We are going to switch to a pair of 650s, uh, see how those work out for it, too, though. So we expect a little more power out of two carbs, naturally, than one, so... Sounds good. More is better. More is better. <laughs> Mopar Jedi Ron Jenkins and engine surgeon Eric Weinrich love their work. Can I get a scalpel in here? <laughs> how we doing, guys? Come along. Eric has been kind enough to strap our new Hemi that Mopar sent us onto the dyno and we're gonna run some numbers. The plan is to extract maximum horsepower while keeping reliability. So what's this thing supposed to make? 525 horsepower, 540 foot-pounds of torque. And then we're gonna step it up. Yep. Two fours on, change ignition system. See, see if we can go some more. See how it goes along the way, yeah. Be interesting to see the differences. What do you think, Eric? 700 with the two fours? After you get done doing a magic tune-up on it? 
<laughs> Eric's dino has seen more muscle than a Hollywood gym. If he can't make it pop, it ain't there. So we'll know exactly on this engine what it's making at the crankshaft. So we don't, where's our temperatures and everything? Oil pressure. Oil pressure, fuel pressure, okay. the water temperature in the block. Okay, we're coming up. It's alive! See how it climbs? And then it gets to 539.9, and then it starts to go the other direction. The torque will fall off when it gets, the RPMs go up, typically the torque falls down. That's a flat torque curve, though. Yeah, yeah, that's, man. that's sweet. Yeah. Time to yeah. stitch it into the Roadrunner. <laughs> thing about Hemis, they always draw a crowd. Baddest motor ever made. But this fan club yeah. needs to get working. The car must be finished in 12 days. So we're gonna get it in today, Ron, or what? Oh yeah, we'll have it in there. We got plenty of help today. Plenty Let's help. get it in, get yeah. the trans in. Let's get these guys in. Well, Riley's shirt's dirty, what do you think? Oh. I like to see their shirts a little dirty. <laughs> 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 get O'Reilly guy Tim is loving this gig. He hasn't had to worry about back orders. And he's picking up hints for his next garage project. Well, I'll stand. Usually when I'm doing this sort of thing, I'm used to radiators, things like that being in our way. Uh, don't have to worry about any of that kind of thing. The fenders are off, the grill's off, the radiator's out. It can only fall to the floor. So in some ways it's easier, some ways it's, it's uh, a little tougher. The width of this thing is uh, definitely playing an issue. Left the back jack down just a hair. The Hemi is in. A big ticket installation, pushing Barry's spendometer to 20 grand with 240 work hours. Uh, yeah, we've done well today. We got the motor back from the dyno, put it in the car with a little bit of, without too much, uh, <laughs> too much of a hassle. That's right. If you don't have any trouble putting it in, it's no fun. Ron's custom front end has given them room to move. Um, transmission's in, all the stuff's going back together. We're, we're really happy, we're making some good progress today. Beautiful. But then, this Roadrunner is selling online. Barry it. wants some shock and awe. I, I do, yeah, I have to be home quite a bit. This engine control. here, 472 Hemi, he's gonna have a lot of engine there. He just needs to uh, make sure he buckles up because he's gonna be taken for a ride, wherever is the fine purchaser of this car. <laughs> Online bidders will never know the trouble Tony's going through. He's buffing through three layers of paint, smoothing out tiny blemishes thanks to a rush job. People don't understand how much it costs to paint a panel anymore. You know, you're talking $700 to repaint a goddamn panel. It's the last shortcut he'll ever take. But overall, the Roadrunner is on rails. The O'Reilly guys steam ahead. Perfect. Most of the trim is restored original. The original rusted trunk floor has gone to Mopar Heaven, where there's a special place reserved for Ron Jenkins. It's the next step, an evolutionary process of building a hot rod. Almost crunch time for Jen. Her auction page goes live tomorrow, and she wants to make her dad happy. As long as that other she side talked him into this. A... I'm not a computer guy. I, I could probably muddle through the thing if I have to. It's not something I you know like to do. I like to hands-on stuff and, and come out here and make stuff and, and put things together. So that's kind of more what I like to do. So the, the whole eBay auction thing is pretty foreign to me. So I ask a lot of questions and try to understand what exactly is happening and, and how the auction process is going to work. So we're doing it on the eBay thing. It's a brave new world for Barry. Where people talk in tongues. I don't know what coding is. Well, it's the HTML stuff, so everything works the way it's supposed to be. Oh. All right. Well, let me know what happens. All right. You gotta have faith.
All right, I've got a couple of pieces that... Uh, Chris is bracing for a deadline, too. Anything that's manufactured. And I know you've got a... He's called Ron in for a closed-door meeting. I need an upper dash pad. The uh, glove box door. He's missing parts. Barry doesn't know. I need... There's that little J-shaped piece at the, the back end of the drip rail. Ron has a Mopar collection back home in San Jose. You know, it, it probably makes probably make a lot of sense for me to go go home and back to the shop and see what we've got. Chris you know, was counting on it. Uh, according to Tony, it's called a shoe clip. And it's but it's their little secret. If this build yeah, stops dead, Barry will do the same to Chris. Ron's overnight rescue might save his bacon. The online auction starts tomorrow. In a little over a week, Vegas will be gearhead central. More than 100,000 people converge on 2 million square feet of automania. Barry White wants to be there. What the hell are you getting us into, Ron? <laughs> With some Mopar madness of his own. It doesn't look that bad. I've had a lot of these cars over the years. Ron Jenkins is Barry's trusted minister of Mopar. Barry's counting on him to help rebirth a super muscle 69 Roadrunner. But it's daughter Jen who might really bring home the bacon. You want to put it on eBay? Yeah. I don't have a problem with doing that. I just don't know anything about it. You're going to have to handle it. The Roadrunner will debut at SEMA, but it will sell on eBay. Ten days before showtime, it's E-Day. Auction launch. How exactly do I find it? Um, go to community. Go back to it's eBay Home. Barry Speed Shop. Type it in. Enter user ID. Click the little me. Okay. La la la. Go all the way down. Jen seems nervous. What's up? Cool. So, how long before the first bid? They have 10 days, but Barry's impatient. He's used to a little more action up front. <laughs> we can build a car faster than you can put it on the damn computer. It's gonna be a long 10 days. Meanwhile, Ron has driven through the night to save Chris's neck. Vital parts were missing, and if Barry found out... A little armload of parts here. Some of the Good, all the little crap that we don't have. A little crap that we're missing, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Chris lives another day. The O'Reilly guys who jumped the counter to wrench at the Mopar party are proving invaluable. Before we do anything, we're gonna have to get that rubber channel in there. Now it's their turn to put heat on Chris for parts. It does, it is slight, you can slide it down and then put the clip in. I don't know if we wanna try to do that or if we wanna hold off. Whenever we don't have something, we just gotta work around it, just go to the next thing, so. That's the sound of Chris drowning. At the front end, the Roadrunner is getting the stopping power to match its Hemi engine. There'll be big diameter discs all round. I ought to stop the car pretty good. The spendometer hits 45 grand and 390 man hours. But with one week to SEMA, Barry's big headaches are still the little things. We just discovered I was gonna put the quarter window in and I found out you got a broken bolt, the one that's very important to uh, put that window in. Another job for the Mopar Jedi. You're having a Mopar force be with you. I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Where's the dumpster? Scott is a Chevy man. Even the thought of converting to Mopar brings him to tears. Thanks, Harley. He still likes it. I guess uh, Harley's telling me something. Uh, I think he's seen tears in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Harley. Ron selected this wreck, 
but it's Barry who's got to make it work. Of course, when you've been building cars for 30 years, you collect some useful junk. Hey, Dean. Yeah. Will this work for your headlights? Sure looks close. Yeah, the, the thickness is good. I, that should work. Right. Some old headlight brackets get them out of a bind. And the verdict is it is really close. You're gonna you're gonna claim it if it works. Yeah, I'll go ahead and claim it. Absolutely, yeah. I figured you would. Excellent. Yeah, yeah hood. The Hemi will growl through magna flow pipes and create the kind of note Barry needs to stop traffic in Vegas. So I'll set the welder up and uh, I'll let you center it all and I'll just go through and tack it. Chris is just hoping he doesn't stop traffic at the speed shop. The uh, only thing I'm thinking that might hang us up is the uh, neck for the, the gas tank. He needs a lucky break on parts. And it's still, I've located one on eBay, but the auction's not up yet. Pretty sure they had them though, huh? Yeah, it was one of them I said that. Sometimes a missing piece is under your nose. So a search begins through the discard pile out back. Meanwhile, Ron plays a hand of his own. Hey, uh, can you, uh, can you take a quick look, quick look out in the, uh, out in the dumpster bay at some of those gas tanks that are sitting out there and see if there's any gas tank filler necks connected to any of them? They're not at Tony's, are they? Really? I know there was one set of bows. I bet you that would work. You do so many cars, you lose track of what the hell was going on. Could you have one of the guys take that thing off of there and overnight that thing to me? Call off the search. Ron's delivered again. I wonder. Isn't that how cars go, you know? You get down to the day before you're ready to go to a car show and you're missing gizmo A, B, or C, you know? But Chris can't relax. I want this car driving Got Saturday. It. Where's our wheels and tires? You said tires were in Ontario. I don't want to hear that we don't have the right tire or something like that on okay. Friday. Okay. So you can call the wheels. You want me to make a list or you got it in your head? I'll make a list. At least the parts fiasco has diverted attention from the online auction. After three days, there hasn't been a bid. Time to panic? No. Yeah. Maybe just as well the O'Reilly guys won't be around for the finale. <laughs> Scott and Tim are heading home. Uh, well, it's customary for us to, you know, here at Barry's to give everybody a T-shirt, you know, after helping out on something like this. And I, I mean, I'm sorry to say, but we're out of T-shirts, so we got you a little something uh, special. <laughs> this is Ron's idea of a Mopar uniform. It brings me back to the early 80s. I used to personally have a mullet, and I just felt like I was retroing back again. <laughs> oh, you look nice. really hideous. Yeah. Sexy in that. <laughs> <laughs> no, look at you with the mullet. <laughs> For a short time, at least, Scott and Tim traveled the road to Mopar, Damascus. <laughs> okay, so show me what you got going here. Gonna... All Barry has to do now is get his Roadrunner built and get it sold. Oh, somebody's bid on it. We got a bid? Yeah, we already have one bid. Yeehaw! That's awesome. Oh, that is great. We have to go tell Dad. Yes. That is, I don't know who the guy is, but no, excellent. I don't know. <laughs> Jen set a reserve of 65000 so Barry's in the money on the first bite. We have a bid on the Roadrunner. We do. We do. Excellent. We have one a bid. bid. Exactly. Thanks. Yay, it's bonus time. <laughs> we got a bid. So we don't even have to finish it now. We'll just leave it like this. Just push it over. Hey, I'm, I'm down with that. <laughs> See, it, it doesn't show any finished pictures, does it, Dean? No. Chris yeah, could do with either, some either, good news. Hey, we got one bid. We got a bid? On the Roadrunner. Who bid? Barry struck gold at his first online super muscle car auction. Question is, how much gold? So it's at 65. Where do you think it's going to go? You first. Uh -huh. OK, 80. Oh, you're being too conservative. 80? 80. Adam? I don't know. I'd like to say go 100. I mean, it's worldwide now, so. 86,750. That's oh. your limit. 86,751. <laughs> uh, I say 108. 108? 108. Oh, wow. That's random. Becky? Really? 120. Wow. Yeah. 
you know, I've done a lot of stuff on eBay and sold a bunch of stuff and man, you don't get bids until the last day on some things. So it's pretty cool you know, to see that happen already. Good news so is they have four more days of bidding. Bad news is they have to finish the car in just two. Get to work, damn it! Barry White's double act is getting down to the wire. He needs his 69 Hemi Roadrunner finished in 48 hours for the world's biggest auto show. Excellent. And get online bidders more excited about a car they can't touch. Again, everyone waits to the last minute or seconds even to bid on stuff on eBay. No matter what it is, it could be a pen or it could be a car. They always wait to the end. The bids have stalled at 66000 but Barry can't afford to worry right now. Two oh. Okay. Ready? Go. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're jumping right off from the coil to the uh -huh. distributor on the coil wire. The 472 Hemi ran fine on the dyno. Now it's not. What's leaking? Barry's getting testy. That's this is the downside to having 800 people working on a car. Jen's holding her nerve, updating images for the auction site. Keep it, Jen. Sure. Go. That's the sound of relief and 540 horsepower. I'm happy. This one's going to be fun. Yeah, I want to see this thing go. No rapid so high, I went up to 100 pounds of pressure and pulled out the filter apart. Time to put a lid on this monster. That looks beautiful, Tony. You're the man. The AAR quality fiberglass hood is finished in muscle black. It's what online bidders were promised. It's what they're gonna get. There's six bids on it now. Six bids? <laughs> yes. That's cool. Yeah. More bidders have arrived. 66,800. If only they knew what was happening at the speed shop. Exposed that. No, what I'm concerned about is how this thing actually gets mounted. What I'm thinking is, is instead of cutting it on the angle of the dash, cut it on the angle of the bezel. I mean, I'm not saying it can't be done. No one can agree if the dash should be new or original. Basically, the solution to their they had was to put the old dash back in. The old dash is an old dash. I'm not happy with the old dash. It's dirty. It's old. I mean, all one side. What we got? Five. Put two on that side and three on this side. So rather than do that, I opted to just go ahead and put the center gauge in. It's a little bit big, and we'll just tailor out whatever we got to make to make it all fit. That's the SMC trademark. Yesterday's heritage, today's technology. It comes at a price. 52 grand on the spendometer and 480 work hours. We'll be mounting tires. We'll have this thing sitting on the ground tonight. That's kind of my goal right now. But for the first time, Barry knows he's at least 15 grand in the money before he debuts his car. Online bidding is up to 67,000. It's a gamble when you do eBay. It's really exciting. You get a couple bidders that really want it, and so they go after it. And then it kind of levels off a little bit, and it gets quiet. And then um, they start up again. Everyone waits. There's no financial pressure. But that doesn't mean Barry will have an easy ride in the final hours. The all-new electric brakes have no power. And Barry, can you give me a pair of uh, channel locks, too? Yep. We're three, four hours behind where we should be right now. But uh, bottom line is, yeah, the guys thought they had it bled correctly. They didn't. It's an it's electric power unit. It's not that familiar. It's not like a normal system. You have to bleed them, and it's got a pump, and it, it cycles. And it's, it's easy to screw up and not get it to bleed correctly. And then you don't have power brakes. You just have manual brakes. Turns out the problem is a two-penny washer. The little things, right down to the end. Hey, it's got power brakes now. Come and get it. This Mopar is done. Tomorrow, it'll be on the road to SEMA, but right now, time to enjoy.
In just four weeks, they turned roadkill into roadrunner. A 60s classic, a Hemi heart shaker, a Mopar legend. Um, you know, the Hemi cars are always cool. It drives good, sounds good, runs good. It's, it's, uh, it's fun, this car came out good. Somebody's gonna have a really nice car. It has the best of the old and the best of the new. It'll be the next cool Mopar to go to is going to be this kind of body style. And it's already cool. Um, it's already a, kind of an aggressive looking car. And I think amongst Mopar people, it's, it's a pretty popular car. For some reason, Mopar guys, oh, they're just like hardcore into Mopar. You know, it's got to be a Mopar or nothing else. Who could blame them? This one's a keeper. The car came out gorgeous, and it's probably the best quality car. I mean, uh, we did something in for three and a half weeks that some people take three years. It's one of Barry's biggest price tags, but you can't get this feeling any other way. isn't known for sure bets, but this Roadrunner is as close as it gets. The only question is, how big will Barry win? So we're, uh, we're in good shape. We'll put her in the trailer and, and head for Las Vegas. For one week each year, Las Vegas becomes Motor Town USA. It is the largest automotive show anywhere in the world. Hotels are full, car lots are busting. Excitement rips through the crowd like wildfire. SEMA is the perfect place to unveil any car because there's a lot of people and they just come to see cars. If it's new and it's got wheels, it's at SEMA. Inside and outside, the Las Vegas Convention Center is jammed with dreams. We're in Vegas, man, and it's a gamble. <laughs> and Barry White has brought one of them. We're gonna come out here and just do a couple of burnouts, see how we, where we're at, how things are going. Fans want Barry to unleash his 69 Hemi Roadrunner on the SEMA test track, but first, he has another appointment at the eBay Motors booth. The bidding keeps going up. We've been checking with the eBay booth off and on all day long, and uh, yeah, we're getting close to 70,000 right now, so I'm, I'm a happy guy. We're good. Let's go get some other stuff done, and we'll come back. Keep checking. Good? It's the last day of his online auction, and bids are accelerating. Uh, this particular listing has already had over 13,000 page views, uh, so very exciting. Typically, we'll see uh, an average listing on eBay Motors about 800 to 1,000 page views, which is terrific. This one has obviously been doing much better. There's a lot of excitement about this car. Barry's first run down the information superhighway is proving a blast, but nothing beats the feel of your butt on a real road with a Hemi up front. That's very beautiful. I mean, I'm having a hard time looking away from it when I'm talking to you here. Very nice piece, clean. You know, if it was a show, like a show for trophies, it would be one of my picks. A lot of guys couldn't afford the Hemi back then, you know. It was uh, maybe a 440, could be a six-pack or four-barrel car, 383 car, you never know. Um, but uh, we've definitely got the epitome of a Roadrunner here, don't we? The Super Muscle Roadrunner is making a splash at SEMA and online. Oh, it's hard to say. These Mopars are on fire right now. Two, two hours and 46 minutes left. While Barry's been burning rubber, his Roadrunner has been making money. 
With just one hour to auction close, it's up to 74,000. Do what you want. I just don't want to waste my breath here. Just four weeks ago, looks like I got hit with a bag of nickels. It was a boyhood dream. My brother and I ran a '69 Roadrunner. You know that was a good car. That was a that was a, a cool body style. But Barry had inspiration. What the hell are you getting us into, Ron? <laughs> First, from his friend Ron <laughs> Jenkins. <laughs> I've had a lot of these cars over the years. Then, from his daughter Jen. You want to put it on eBay? Yeah. Pretty soon, they were building for their first online auction. Barry Speed Shop. Type it in. Enter user. <laughs> we can build a car faster than you put it on the damn computer. But some things didn't change. I need an upper dash pad, a glove box door, those little corners on the drip rail. Chris struggled for parts. Hmm. I don't want to talk about it right now. And Tony no, I'm, I'm, had I'm paint issues. Tony just gets real emotional. You know, you're talking $700 repaint a damn panel. <laughs> <laughs> Barry's O'Reilly suppliers offered to help. Yeah, All right. Got long hair like Ron. What do you think? All right. <laughs> and got Mopar haircuts for their trouble. But when you're building a super muscle car, there's no rules and no limit at auction. Ready, Matt? <laughs> Yeah. With less than three minutes to auction close, a bidding war develops between three buyers. Uh, a lot of people hold on to their bid until the very last minute. Yeah. 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 Here we go. <laughs> Two minutes, 11 seconds. What are the I think it probably should go the way the Mopars are going nowadays. I think it should probably do 100, maybe a little over 100. That may be optimistic, but the net is delivering more bidders than Barry's used to. When you go on stage and you got three to five minutes to sell your car, um, you're just hoping the right people are standing out there and you don't know. So in this case, you know, we've got a we... much broader audience. Exactly. 75, 75, Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. Yeah. 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 Seventy-four <laughs> nine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is where this is where I can start jumping. Yeah. 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 Seventy-five grand, down to the final seconds. Yeah. yeah. And just in time to win, game over. Yes! <laughs> 76,100, a tidy profit of 21 grand. No, that was very cool, very exciting. It's just as exciting as uh, being there at the last few seconds with everything going on. That was almost horrifying. It actually yeah. was, because you all you can't refresh right the here. auctioneers. Yeah, yeah the refresh. <laughs> Thanks for everybody for the help. Thank you, Ron, for all your help, man. Thank you. You're awesome. Maybe Jen can teach an old dog new tricks. He learned how to click. I'm very proud of him. <laughs> I'm gonna he wear the thing. Page. <laughs> gonna so, wear the thing who is the mystery buyer? Wow. That's incredible. Those wheels are so much better than what I thought. That's a little different than we used to build in the set. <laughs> Chris Londall from Portland, Oregon, is united with his new Mopar a few days later. That's what I'm talking about. That is awesome. Look at a ticket. <laughs> Time for Chris to get his money's worth. To do this in four weeks, incredible. Absolutely incredible. It's a bitchin' car and drives good. And he's gonna have a lot of fun with it. I mean, it's more than what I thought it was. It really is. The suspension's a lot more, the brakes are a lot more, uh, the power sound. It's something you can take out and go around some corners and, and uh, you put some miles on it, it's not gonna devalue the car. You know, the more you drive it, the more, more fun you're gonna have. The styling of the car, I mean, it's just an awesome car. It's a terrific car. So at the end of the day, he's going to have a lot of fun with the car, and that's the main thing. Yeah, well done. Well done. No question about it. Can't wait to get, really open it up and have some real fun with it.